Hi, I'm Jim Veach, and for my NXP design challenge, I'm going to take an MRF-101 and make a broadband HF amplifier. Why would anyone want to do such a thing? Well, NXP gives us reference designs for 13, 27, 40, and 50 megahertz. What if I'm an airline pilot that wants to talk to oceanic air traffic control? Well, then I'll need to cover 2 to 22 megahertz. What if I'm the captain of a ship that wants to communicate with the shore or other ships? Then I'll have to cover 2 to 26 megahertz. If I'm in the military or a ham radio operator, I need to cover the entire HF band, maybe even an extended band. I want my design challenge amp to take 1 watt in, produce 100 watts out, cover 3 to 30 megahertz at least, have a good input match, be small, cheap, and easy to build. We'll start with NXP's MRF-101. We'll transform the input impedance to 50 ohms, We'll match the load impedance to the output impedance. Then we'll get thermally compensated DC into the gate for bias and DC into the drain for power. To stabilize the gain and linearize the amp, we add feedback components. And of course, all of this stuff has to work over a wide range of frequency. We'll run simulations on the design, perform schematic capture, and lay out a circuit board. We'll have a PC board made and put some components on it. We'll get a standard CPU cooler with integral fan and we'll mount our MRF-101 to it. The eval board mounts on top of it. To test the amp, we'll connect the low power transceiver to the input of the amplifier. Then we'll connect the output to a watt meter, and the output of the watt meter to a 50 ohm load. A 200 watt switching supply powers the amp. The test data show that we can get 100 watts output with less than 2 watts drive up to 30 megahertz, and 75 watts output at 50 megahertz, all with a decent input match. The amp is also small, lightweight, and inexpensive. Well, that's my NXP Design Challenge Amplifier. Thanks for watching. If you'd like more information, visit rfpowertools.com.